reads, therefore the sadness is without limit. You must hear reason. And when I have heard it, what blessing brings it? But not a present remedy, at least a patient sufferance. I wonder that thou, being as thou sayest thou art, born under Saturn, goest about to apply a moral medicine to a mortifying mischief. I cannot hide what I am. I must be sad when I have cause and smile at no man's jests. Eat when I have stomach and wait for no man's leisure. Sleep when I am drowsy and tend on no man's business. Laugh when I am merry and claw no man in his humor. Yea, but you must not make the full show of this till you may do it without controlment. You have of late stood out against your brother, who has ta newly taken you into his grace, where it is impossible for you to take true root, but by the fair weather you make for yourself. It is needful that you frame the season for your own harvest. I had rather be a canker in a hedge than a rose in his grace. And it better fits my blood to be disdained of all than to fashion a carriage to rob love from any. In this, though I cannot be said to be a flattering, honest man, Yet it must not be denied I am a plain dealing villain. I am trusted with a muzzle and enfranchised with a block. Therefore, I have decreed not to sing in my cage. If I had my mouth, I would bite. If I had my liberty, <laughs> I would do my liking. In the meantime, let me be that I am and seek not to alter me. Can you make no use of your discontent? I make all use of it, for I use it only. <laughs> Who comes here? What news, Boracchio? I came yonder from a great supper. The prince, your brother, is royally entertained by Leonato. And I can give you intelligence of an intended marriage. Will it serve for any model to build mischief on? What is he for a fool that betroths himself to unquietness? Mary. It is your brother's right hand. Ooh, the most exquisite Claudio. <laughs> Even he. <laughs> A proper squire. And who? And who? Which way looks he? Very on hero, daughter and heir to Leonato. A very forward march, Jake. How came you to this? Being entertained for a perfumer as I was smoking a musty room, comes me the prince and Claudio arm in arm in sad conference. I whipped me behind the heiress, and there heard it agreed upon the prince should woo Hero for himself, and having obtained her, give her to Claudio. Come, come, let us thither. This may prove food to my displeasure. That young startup hath all the glory of my overthrow. If I can cross him anyway, I bless myself every way. You are both sure and will assist me to the death, my lord. Let us to the great supper. Their cheer is the greater that I am subdued. Would the cook were of my mind. <laughs> Come, shall we go prove what's to be done? We'll wait upon your lordship.
come here at supper? Well, I saw him not. How tartly that gentleman looked. I never can see him, but I'm heartburned an hour after him. He is of a very melancholy disposition. It were an excellent man that were made just in the midway between him and Benedict. The one is too like an image and says nothing. The other too like my lady's eldest son, ever more tattling. <laughs> then half Signor Benedict's tongue in Count John's mouth, and half Count John's melancholy in Signor Benedict's face. <laughs> With a good leg and a good foot, uncle, and money enough in his purse, such a man would win any woman in the world if he could get her good will. <laughs> By my troth, niece, thou will never get thee a husband if thou be so shrewd of thy tongue. Oh, in faith, she's too cursed. Too cursed is more than cursed. I shall lessen God's sending that way. For it is said that God sends a cursed cow short horns, but to a cow too cursed, he sends none. So by being too cursed, God will send thee no horns. Just if he send me no husband. For the which blessing, I am at him, upon my knees, every morning and every evening. Lord, I could not endure a husband with a beard on his face. I had rather lie in the woolen. <laughs> Thou mayest uh, light on a husband that hath no beard. Oh, and what should I do with him? Dress him in my apparel and make him my waiting gentlewoman. <laughs> he that hath a beard is more than a youth, and he that hath no beard is less than a man. But he that is more than a youth is not for me, and he that is less than a man, well, I am not for him. <laughs> Therefore, I will even take sixpence in earnest of the bear herd and lead his apes into hell. Well, then go you into hell? No, but to the gate. And there will the devil meet me, like an old cockle, with horns on his head, and say, Get you to heaven, Beatrice. Get you to heaven. Here's no place for you, maid. <laughs> and so deliver I up my apes and away to St. Peter for the heavens. He shows me where the bachelors sit, and there live we, as merry as the day is long. Oh. Well, niece, I trust you will be ruled by your father. Yes, faith, it is my cousin's duty to make curtsy and say, Father, as it please you. <laughs> but for all that, cousin, let him be a handsome fellow, or else make another curtsy and say, Father, as it please me. Well, niece, I hope to see thee one day fitted with a husband. Not till God make men of some other metal than earth. <laughs> Would it not grieve a woman to be overmastered with a pierce of valiant dust? To make an account of her life to a clod of wayward mark? No, uncle, I'll none. Adam's sons are my brethren. And truly, I hold it a sin to match in my kindred. <laughs> Daughter, remember the things I told you. If the prince do solicit you in that kind, you know your answer. Oh, the fault be in the music, cousin, if you be not wooed in good time. <laughs> if the prince be too important, tell him <laughs> there is measure in everything, and so dance not the answer. For hear me, hero. <laughs> Wooing, wedding, and repenting is as a Scotch jig, a measure, and a syncope. The first suit is hot and hasty as a Scotch jig, full as fantastical. The wedding, mannerly modest, as a measure, full of state and ancientry. And then comes repentance. And with his bad leg, falls into the syncope. Bastard, bastard, till he falls into his grave. Her cousin, you apprehend passing shrewdly. I have a good eye, Uncle. I can see a church by daylight. Ah, oh, no. <laughs> uh, the revelers are entering. Brother, make good room. Lady, will you walk about with your friend? So you walk softly and look sweetly and say nothing. I'm yours for the walking, especially when I walk away. With me in your company? I may say so when I please. And when please you to say so. When I like your favor, for God forbid the loot should be like the case. Speak low if you speak low. Well, I would you did like me. So would not I, for your own sake, for I have many ill qualities. Which is what? I say my prayers aloud. I love you the more to hear us a cry all day. God match me with a good dancer. Oh. <laughs> I know you well enough. You are Signor Antonio. Oh, better word. I know you by the waggling of your head. Oh. 
tell you the truth, I caught your pigeon. Oh, you could never do him so ill well unless you were the very man. Here's his dry hand up and down. You are he. You are he. Oh, you were. I am not. Come, come. Do you think I do not know you by your excellent wit? Can virtue hide itself? Go to mum, you are he. Graces will appear. And there's an end. <laughs> No, you shall pardon me. No, will you not tell me who you are? Not now. That I was disdainful, and that I had my good wit out of the hundred merry tales. Well, this was Signor Benedict that said so. What is he? I'm sure you know him well enough. Not I, believe me. Did he never make you laugh? I pray you, what is he? Why, he's the prince's jester. <laughs> Answer I in the name of Benedict. But hear these ill news with the ears of Claudio. Tis certain so the prince woos for himself. Friendship is constant in all things save the offices and affairs of love. Therefore, let all hearts and love use their own tongues, and every eye negotiate for itself and trust no agent. For beauty is a witch against whose faith charm melteth into blood. This is an accident of hourly proof, which I mistrusted not. Farewell, therefore, hero. 